Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing demand, supply and price. We're going to form a model that analyzes how markets work. Now this model is the core fundamental concept of microeconomics. However, it is also very useful for macroeconomics because in macroeconomics we study various type of financial markets, foreign exchange market or factor markets like the labor market and the understanding of this chapter will be very useful for understanding all of those different type of markets that we do in macroeconomics. So let's look at what this this model is about. This model tells us that we are working in a competitive market with many buyers and sellers and the good that the sellers are selling is identical across all of these sellers. So it's a homogenous or standardized product that the sellers are selling. The demand and supply model looks at how these buyers and sellers interact with each other and negotiate a price at which exchange will occur. The key elements of this model are the demand curve, supply curve, demand and supply curve shift, then we look at the market equilibrium. So what's the final negotiation that satisfies both buyers and sellers? And can there be any changes in this contract? So we will look at the changes in market equilibrium. So let's start with our discussion of the demand curve. Demand is going to be representing your buyers and quantity demanded refers to the specific amount that consumers are willing to purchase of a particular product or service. Quantity demanded is not to be confused with quantity exchanged. So quantity demanded and quantity exchanged cannot always be used interchangeably. Quantity demanded depends upon many different factors and I've listed some of them over here. How much I'm willing to purchase of a good as a consumer will depend upon the price of the good. So that's the most obvious answer. It also depends on the consumer's income. It can depend upon prices of other related goods. It can depend upon our taste or preferences, how many people are willing to buy this particular good and then expectations about future. So we want to isolate the relationship between quantity demanded and the price of the product holding everything else constant. This assumption is referred to as the Cetris Peribus condition. Demand schedule will give us a relationship between these two. So over here I have price of cotton starting from $2 and going all the way down to 50 cents per pound. And the quantity demanded corresponding to all of these different prices is also listed in this table. As you can see as price of cotton goes up, quantity demanded of cotton is actually going down and vice versa. This negative relationship between the two holding everything else constant is called the law of demand and our data set which was giving us this information is referred to as the demand schedule. Now I can plot the demand schedule on a two-dimensional graph and that will give us our demand curve. In economics we always typically put price on the y-axis even though in this case price is your independent variable and quantity demanded depends on price and that is your dependent variable. Why am I pointing this out? Because in conventional mathematics we always put the dependent variable on the y-axis and the independent variable on the x-axis. So we have our demand schedule on the previous slide. We'll use the same information to plot these coordinate points. At any given price, we have the corresponding quantity demanded on the x-axis. So we get a set of coordinate points. If we connect the coordinate points, we get our demand curve, which you can see is a downward sloping curve, reflecting that inverse relationship between the two variables. If price goes up, quantity demanded decreases. If price goes down, quantity demanded increases. So we can see the negative slope of the function is telling us about the inverse relationship between the two. Terminology in economics is very important and now we are looking at increase in demand. So let's assume population is rising. With higher population, overall number of consumers have increased, so overall quantity demanded will increase. But it's not just quantity demanded increasing, it is now increasing at any given price. And that's the key over here. My demand schedule is now no longer the same. The old demand schedule is redundant. And you can see for any given price, I have now a higher quantity demanded. For all of these prices, corresponding quantity demanded is now higher than before. So we are now working a new set of coordinate points. And once I plot these coordinate points, I have actually a new demand curve. So whenever we have increase in demand, this is when your quantity demanded rises at any given price. And this is primarily because of factors other than price. In our example, the factor that was 
causing this increase in demand was higher population. A lot of students confuse when we have a movement along the curve versus a shift of the curve. When we have higher quantity demanded, but this is because of decrease in price, this is referred to as a movement along the curve. The demand curve and the demand schedule are exactly the same as before. I'm still working with my D1, but because of the lower price, quantity demanded is higher. We are moving from A to B. Whereas a shift in the demand curve is when your price is the same at $1.50, but quantity demanded is correspondingly higher. Let's look at this example. In the first one, I have a price of can of Coke has increased from a dollar to three dollars. Is this a movement along the curve or a shift of the curve? We have our original demand curve, let's call it D1. If price is rising from 1 to 3, this is simply decrease in quantity demanded and that's a movement along the demand curve. So note that when we are moving upwards along the demand curve, this is actually a decrease in quantity demanded. In the, my second example, we have new scientific research that is telling us that a regular Coke drinker lives on an average of five years longer. What do you think will happen in this case? So this is our original demand curve. Now at any given price, consumers are willing to drink more Coke. So that will give you a new coordinate point and we can do it for various set of prices, P2, P3, P4, etc. You have a whole new set of coordinate points. So given your demand curve, if a factor changes and causes quantity demanded to decrease at any given price, that is a decrease in demand and causes the curve to shift to the left. And if a factor changes in a way that it causes quantity demanded to increase at any given price, that is a shift to the right. A quick way to remember is that quantity is being measured on the x-axis. So increase is always to the right, we're moving away from the origin, and decrease is always to the left. So other than population, what are some other factors that cause the demand curve to shift? A very common factor is price of a related good. In this case, we can split this further into price of a complement or a price of a substitute. For substitutes, note that two goods are substitutes of each other when they satiate the same desire. So if price of one goes down, it will cause the demand for the other to also go down. If we are looking at Coke and Pepsi as the two goods, if price of Coke is going down, will I consume more Coke or more Pepsi? I'd rather consume more Coke because for me they're pretty much the same. And as I'm consuming more Coke, demand for Pepsi will decrease. If I was to draw the demand curve for Pepsi, and all we know is that price of Coke has gone down. Now price of Coke is not measured over here because the demand curve for Pepsi is drawn against the price of Pepsi only. As price of Coke goes down, that's a price of a related good. Price of Pepsi is still the same, so let's assume we are at P1. And at P1, people are now willing to consume more coke and therefore less pepsi and likewise for any given price we have a lower quantity demanded for pepsi and it causes a shift in the demand curve for pepsi in some cases we have an opposite relationship and these goods are called complements for consumers so this is when price of one going down causes the demand for the other to go Complements are typically those goods which consumers consume together. So this could be your laptop and operating systems. It could be a car and gasoline. If price of gasoline keeps going up, so demand for cars will be going down. Because as gasoline becomes more and more expensive, people might be switching to alternatives like public transportation and they are now willing to buy less cars overall. Remember the key, when we draw a particular demand curve, have price of cars and quantity of cars on the two axes. So the demand curve over here represents the relationship between these two. If something other than price of cars, in our case price of gasoline is changing, this is going to cause a shift in the curve. At any given price of a car, overall quantity demanded has reduced. Another common factor that causes a shift in the demand curve is income of consumers. And income again can also be split into two different type of effects. We have normal goods in which when your income increases, your demand for the good also increases. So, so if income goes up and people are buying more apples, this is causing a shift in the demand curve to the right or increase in demand. 
So for normal goods, remember, we have a positive relationship between the two. However, this is not always the case. We do see goods in which when income increases, it actually causes a decrease in the demand for the good. And these type of goods will be defined as inferior goods. Now, this has nothing to do with the quality of the good. This is to do with the relationship between income and demand. Here we have a negative relationship between the two. So if income is increasing, demand for this particular good will go down. Can you think of a good for which as you earn more, you would actually rather consume less of that good. So there are many examples out there, but a very common one is your public transportation. And we often see that a lot of people, as soon as they cross a certain threshold of income, they'd rather own their own car. And therefore, we see demand for public transportation decreases with higher income. Note that all of these shifters are arising out of the factors that we had listed at the beginning of the class. So income, prices of related goods, as preferences change over time, that will cause an increase or decrease in demand. At any given price, quantity demanded may rise or fall. Another common reason for a shift in the demand curve is changes in expectation. If I'm expecting higher prices in the future, so I'm indicating future as D plus one, I might as well buy the good today. So demand for the good today will increase. You can apply this example to pretty much any good and I would like to apply it to housing. If people expect prices to increase, people who are planning to buy a house would much rather buy a house today and not wait. So we'll see at any given price today, overall quantity demanded is higher. So we again have a new set of coordinate points, which is giving us our increased demand curve. Over here, we have two different consumers with downward sloping demand curve, and this is for blue jeans. And given all those other factors, constant or citrus peribus, we have a downward sloping demand curve for both of these individuals. The market demand curve will be simply the horizontal summation of the individual demand curves. A horizontal summation refers to holding the price constant at some level, so we can hold it constant at $30, sum it up over the horizontal axis. The first individual wants to buy three pairs of jeans and the second individual wants to buy two pairs of jeans. So the market quantity demanded at $30 is five. Likewise, we can now hold price constant at $1 and look at the individual quantity demanded. So that gives you four and three respectively. So the total market quantity demanded at price of one is seven pairs of jeans. So this is what we call horizontal summation when we hold price constant and sum up the quantities of all the consumers in the market to get our coordinate point for the market demand curve. And we repeat the process for all of these different prices and get our downward sloping demand curve.